So throughout the years, Tombstone has had a couple of different frame configurations. And from a casual observer's point of view, they might look like they're all the same, but there's actually some subtle differences throughout virtually every season. So uh, we're going to go over some of those, some of those differences. This, this here is the frame from season two. Okay? This is the actual frame that won the championship. Um, so there's minor differences between season one and season two. Season one didn't have the shock mount for the drive system. They were actually just hard mounts welded in place. So this was an upgrade from season one to season two. Um, season one did not have any armor panel over the, the, the nose section, just over the, the part where all the, the, the parts were. So the mounts to mount down the armor certainly weren't there. But the basic configuration was identical from season one to season two. All right. So this poor frame has seen seen some roughness here. Um, so this is this dent right here. That's from the, the match against Bita. Um, it really clobbered me pretty good right there. Some cuts and stuff in the back. Um, so when I made it through season two and won the championship, the robot was essentially complete and uh, ready to go. It was combat ready. So we didn't make a new frame for season three. So this season two frame carried into season three and it saw a lot of work in that point in time. So um, we actually had to cut the entire nose of the frame off and weld it back on twice. Um, all of the frame tubes in here were, were damaged bad enough. They were twisted. We had to cut those sections out and re-weld them in. You can see a section here. This tube was cut out and we welded back in. So you can see the patch right there. And uh, you can look through all the welds. You can see stuff has been welded over and then over and then over. Um, so this, th this poor guy really saw a lot of wear and tear. So the armor arrangement on this was thinner sheets of titanium. Um, essentially bolted in place. So the armor didn't provide anything structural. All it really was was just covers to keep stuff from getting inside and things poking through. But it's, it's relatively thin. Um, it's 63 thousandths titanium there. I think it's, it's a little thicker. I think it was 90 thousandths over the, where the motors and batteries were. But it's still relatively thin because that's all I had to wait for. Um, Frame construction itself for all of my frames is 4130 chromoly tubing. Um, there are some pieces, like this little piece right here is just mild steel. There's, and the, these panels, I think, were all just mild steel. But the actual tubing is all 4130 chromoly. So it, it, throughout the years, this has proven to be fairly strong. Um, and it, it does have some measure of flex to it to, to keep it from failing under huge hits. So this is, this is the one that won the championship right here. It doesn't really look all that impressive right now, but this is, this is the one that, that got me the giant nut. So all of the armor panels and stuff that go to this frame, I've never sold any of those pieces. I'm going to keep those. So, um. So sorry, collectors, you don't get any of this stuff. This would be a good time to talk about the sponsors that we had through this time period. So uh, Lincoln Electric is a fantastic company that's been a grand supporter for Battle Lots over the years. And they really helped us a lot, especially this season when we had to re-weld everything so many times. Uh, Keysight has wonderful test equipment. I love using some of their test equipment. Uh, Tormac is the company that uh, made my CNC mill um, for personal home CNC. They have the one of the better units out there. I'm really happy with that. Uh, Vex Robotics uh, makes some speed controllers, some electronic things that we were using for this year. They're also the company that uh, makes the Tombstone toys, which are a lot of fun. And uh, last sponsor for this season was NPC Robotics. NPC has helped me throughout the years. 
with drivetrain components and wheels and whatnot. Uh, they're my longest standing sponsor and we're very grateful for all of these sponsors' support. Um, so anyway, this is the, the basically the arrangement for season one, two, and three was either this exact frame or really similar to this. So let's move on to the next frame. So moving forward to season four and five, this is the frame and the basic configuration that we ran. So there were, there were a lot of changes, although most of them were electronic rather than physical. But let's go over the frame. Okay. So by the end of season three, it was obvious that a single frame is no longer going to be viable to run through a BattleBots event. You just take too much damage. So we, we had a couple of frames for season four and five. Um, and this is the only surviving one at this point in time. Some of the changes that we made, the, the basic layout where everything is, nothing changed, but there were, there were a few changes. So the frame itself is all chromoly construction, 4130. However, before we'd also used 4130 plate up here for where the, the weapon mounts, and I was having some issues with that material bending. Um, and so um, switched that out to AR plate. So this is AR400 up here for the, that. And that has essentially eliminated that issue. So we've continued to use AR plate for those going forward from this point. Um, a bit about the frame. The, the tubing that's used throughout this is all one inch diameter. But the wall thickness on that tubing varies depending upon what I think are the stresses at that point. So obviously the supports that go out and hold the weapon is very thick material on the outside. Um, but then the cross bracing is thinner because it sees less stress. Most of it's on that outer one. The, the pins right here that everything else is basically welded to and starts from, this is very thick material. But then the rest of this is fairly thin. So it goes from a thick, the thickest piece is 188 thousandths wall. And some of the thinner stuff, like the support for the back of the weapon motor, is only 35 thousandths wall. So it, it's just depending upon what I think the stresses are at those points. And the upside of that is you can manage the weight very well. You only put the weight in the pieces that need to be stronger and less so in areas where you can get away with it. Uh, the downside from that is you just have a lot of welding, and so when there's something that breaks or happens, you've got all kinds of stuff that, that need to be welded over. So you end up with frames that look like this when they're done. So this one's had some patches done. It's had a few spots that had to be welded over. Um, and, you know, you, you, you get stuff where, like, you know, these welds have cracked, and so we'd refloat them a whole bunch of times, and it starts to look kind of beat up by the by the end of a tournament um, but that's where the basic major changes as far as frame construction went we did rewire a lot of the internals for these seasons so I changed the change the type of speed controllers that I was using for drive reconfigured some of the wiring layout internally in previous versions the power switches were mounted up top here so you had to turn them on through access holes in the armor panel. That was a good placement because it's safe. It's kind of right in the center of the robot. It's hard for anything to get to it. But the, the downside is if the robot is upside down at the end of the match, well, then your access points to turn it off are pointing to the floor. So you have to turn over a powered live combat robot to get to the power switches to turn it off, which is not safe. It's not the best way to do that. So those switches are moved from here to a panel in the back, because those, those spots I can get to in any configuration, doesn't matter how the robot lands, I can still get to those to turn the robot off. So that was a, that was a better way to handle uh, the way that was laid out. So in this season, we went from the basically the stone look on the armor panels to an all black look. It was all black all the way over. Um, still similar design. It was still relatively thin titanium all the way around. Still 90 thousandths here. I think still the 63 thousandths on the front. Um, 
I don't have any of the other panels because I've sold them all through eBay. In fact, I'll probably list this one too. Uh, but this is the basic configuration of how the robot was run for Season 4 and 5. The sponsors for Season 5 included NPC Robotics. Again, they've been fantastic for me for motors and wheels and whatnot. A uh, new sponsor for this season was uh, PTI, Pleasanton Trucking. Um, you got any uh, needs for, for gravel or building supplies in San Francisco Bay Area, they are fantastic at that. And uh, then we added Printed Solid. Printed Solid is a company that's uh, run by a friend of mine, Dave, who um, was a previous competitor. So um, he's connected to the sport for a while. And they deal with 3D printers and 3D printed material. And uh, so they've been, they've been really good to me. For season six, we made some relatively significant changes to the way the frame is set up. So the, the configuration of where items sit didn't change. So weapon motor still sits here, drive motors, electronics. Where the stuff was in the robot didn't really move a lot. But we made a lot of changes to just the, the actual construction of the frame. So uh, my former teammate Rick has always been canvassing to use a solid rail down the sides rather than the welded in pieces. And there's no doubt that this is stronger. Um, it's heavier. And so we'd put this off for a while, but it was obvious we needed to make some increase in strength. And so this was the year that we pulled the trigger and decided to go forward with that. So in this case, it's still the same one inch tubing, but the heavy tubing runs down the length of it all the way to the, to the back panel in one piece. Um, and before the armor panels were essentially more like dust covers. They were there to, to uh, just keep material. You know, it's a, the, the battle box is dirty. You get all kinds of parts flying around. You don't want things laying inside. But they weren't really all that good for protection because it was relatively thin. So an idea that I had been floating around for a while was to sort of inset the armor into the robot and then make it thicker so that the armor could provide the structural bracing for it. And so that's, that's where a lot of these changes came about. So before, if you remember, we had the, the cross bracing across in there. Well, now we're essentially relying on the armor to provide that cross bracing support. So this allowed us to go with much thicker titanium. This is 150,000. So if you remember, this is 63,000 stuff. It was just bolted on before. The only thing, it was just sitting there, and the bolts were taking all of the shear load. But now it's kind of set down in a lot more bolts. It's, it's, the armor supports the frame. So there's no doubt that this turned out better. It's, it's significantly stronger. The frames held up a lot better. Even though the opponents are hitting harder, the frame held up fairly well. The downside is that we gain some weight. The frame and armor package is about five pounds heavier than the frame and armor package was before, which forced us to make a lot of compromises that sort of ended up biting us in the butt down the road. So. Uh, we had to thin and change some of the stuff internally. Like, you can see this is open right here. Well, this was, used to be a welded in steel panel to sort of give some structure and help support the batteries. But we just didn't have the weight for it. And so this was just a riveted in piece of aluminum here and it didn't provide enough support for the batteries. And so we ended up with, this is part of the reason why we ended up with some battery fires. And if you can see that this particular frame, even after trying to clean it up, this is the frame from the uh, tantrum match. And, uh, you know, we, we burnt to the ground in that one. Um, so there's a lot of stuff here we did right. 
I got to agree, this is a stronger way to, to build the frame. Uh, unfortunately, we did gain some weight in the process, and so down the road, we're going to have to make some further changes. We did upgrade so that the, the shock mount for the, the drive system before had a rubber uh, shock isolator in between the bolts. Uh, we changed that to two in there, and it did stiffen that up enough that you could still get some shock mounting from that, but it, all of this ended up stronger. So this was a pretty good upgrade. I got to admit this was a pretty good upgrade. Um, there's, there's further work to do. So going, going forward, there's, we're going to have to find some way to, to, to take some weight out of this. One of those things is this is 3 8 inch steel all around where the, the armor panels are bolted in place. This, this, I mean, three sixteenths. This, this could be dropped down to probably an eighth inch material, all the way around. And I probably would like to inset this further. So right now, it is below the level of the tubing, but I'd actually kind of like this down to where it's mounted on the center of that tube. So the tubes that have to be welded in slightly different than they are right now, because then it, then it would. Right now, basically, the bolts are taking the load. If it was pinned against the frame rails, then it's definitely the armor is pushing up against the frame rails and supporting it rather than relying on the bolts to take the load. You get enough twist on that, it'll shear the bolt heads off. We, we, we've seen that previously before. Um, so this was, uh, this was how the robot competed for season six and the Amazon Remarks event. So this, this actually has been used a couple different times. Um, for this season, we took three frames and going forward, I think three is probably the minimum for going to a BattleBots event. They just take too much wear and tear and damage along the way. Um, so what am I gonna do going forward? So we talked about the inset and armor a little more. Um, all of these cutouts were done on the armor basically for weight management. If I can find a way to free up some weight here and there, I'd like to not do that. I'd like to have those panels be solid. One of the things I may end up doing is we may end up shortening the frame a little bit and just shortening all the weapons to accommodate that. Because um, that would change the way the robot drives a lot. So the the extra added weight, even though the motors are kind of in the same spot, it's heavier on the nose now than it used to be. And it doesn't drive as well. You start driving, you just don't have enough traction on the drive wheels. You got too much weight on the nose. So if I can pull that nose back, you know, three inches, well, I can free up a lot of weight in the process, but I can also just bring it in closer to where the drive wheels are mounted and it should drive significantly better and we we need to make those improvements we need to get the drive to to, to work a, to get a little better traction i'm happy with the power of the weapon um but we're going to have to to make some changes to try to see if we can fix some of the reliability issues there to make sure we don't have any of these for the fires and whatnot i've got ideas on all of those things um we'll just see how well i can make all of that happen The only new sponsor we had for season six was MaxAmp Batteries. Uh, MaxAmp makes batteries for a lot of your top teams, um, and they definitely put out a lot of power. So there you are, the frames for Tombstone throughout the seasons. Uh, obviously, we had a lot of fun with this. And down the road, we got new ideas. So when I start doing the build for the next season's frames, We'll go ahead and document all that. So there'll be more of that on the channel. Um, if you like the channel, like what we're doing, go ahead and like and subscribe. And uh, we'll have more for you down the road. It's going to be fun.